So I grew up on a farm in Wisconsin. It's been in my family since 1882. My great grandfather, Hans Christian Anderson, came over. He built a dairy farm. Um, my grandpa and my dad grew up there. I grew up there. By the time that I was old enough to remember a lot, uh, my dad had stopped dairy farming. Um, but I was still really interested in farming and we grew crops and uh, I worked on my neighbor's dairy farm helping him milk cows and fell in love with the lifestyle. And in my high school yearbook, it still says I want to be a farmer. Um, that was my life goal. At 18, I took my parents' farm over, really against their wishes, uh, because they knew that it wasn't large enough to um, survive. We had 240 acres. But at 18, I thought I knew everything. And so had a year where I grew great crops, but um, did not have balance a checkbook. And so I lost my, uh, lost my shirt basically in the first year. So that led me into being, becoming a logger to take o to really pay off my farming debts. During that time, working in 30 below in Wisconsin, realized that probably college wasn't such a bad idea after all. So I went on to college, became a forester uh, from there. Really thought I was still gonna live in Wisconsin, but life didn't turn out that way. I ended up working in Florida for many years, uh, had a successful career in the timber industry, and then got into, technolo into technology. Really found my niche in natural resource management. Successful career, but always felt the pull to get back to the land. And really now getting late in my career, um, my wife and I started looking for uh, some property. We'd been coming through this area in the Virginia um, Blue Ridge Mountains, the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, and just always came, whenever we drove through this area, we just thought this is the place, if we could ever find a property here, yeah. this would be the place. And it just became one of um, me every weekend searching for property online. I found an application, ONX Maps, that allowed me to search for properties. And then I would look for properties for sale on another website or a couple other websites. And really was doing that just about every weekend for a couple of years and had probably 150 properties identified. When I grew up, what they call today organic farming and, and kind of off-grid living is you know, kind of how I was raised, although we didn't think of it that way. Uh, well, yeah, we had electricity, we had, um, you know, we had gas and, and whatever, but we heated with firewood uh, mostly. That was driven from the 70s fuel crisis that happened with fuel prices and my dad converted our, our house to back to firewood, which is how he was raised. Um, so he kind of went back to making sure he could take care of his family and keep keep heat on and, and um, but we also had huge gardens. My mom was um, very much uh, focused on providing for her family and she would, you know, we would can literally hundreds and hundreds of quarts and pints of vegetables, corn and, and beans. and. So I grew up in Southern California in a, a town, a coastal town of La Jolla. And um, the extreme opposite of what Chuck grew up in. <laughs> so for us to be together is kind of miraculous. Um, we definitely have melded our worlds together very nicely in Raleigh. I grew up um, working in the summers on my tan at the beach. <laughs> and then a few odd jobs here and there at different uh, gyms and whatnot. Um, so when, when Chuck was slaving away at the dairy farm <laughs> trying to make ends meet, I was doing something very different and um, and I there's something that I admire so much about Chuck and, and his childhood and being able to have such a strong work ethic um, that he has taught me a lot about um, the, the joy of working hard and seeing um, the, the product of the what you, yeah, the fruits of your labor. So, you know, when we met in Raleigh, it was kind of a perfect middle ground for us. We, the, the home that we live in in Raleigh is absolutely beautiful on um, the Noose River. So we don't look into any other homes in our backyard. We look directly on this gorgeous river. 
And uh, we feel very fortunate that we've had that land to raise our kids in and to be able to, to play within city, but have a little bit of country in our backyard as well. But we always knew we wanted more. We always knew we wanted a little bit more peace and quiet. We wanted to raise animals. We wanted to get back to, to the way that Chuck was raised and, and becoming a little bit more independent with our lifestyle. And, um, and so, you know, we started dreaming about moving to Virginia, you know, years back as Chuck was saying, and um, started looking and, and it was mainly for retirement. We wanted to get land for retirement. So once the kids were out of high school, we were gonna move and start our new life in the country. Yeah, so well, one of the things that kind of accelerated our process was the change in society, what's going on right now. Um, we're both, um, you know, very conservative and, you know, we really didn't like what's happening in our country and really starting to becoming concerned. I work, work in the electric power industry right now and, you know, watching some of the things, you know, happen <clears throat> to our electric grid. Um, obviously, recently we've had the, the, um, the fuel shortages because of a, a cyber attack on our fuel pipelines. And people panicking, <clears throat> like the public panicking about right. it, so which makes it so much worse. <laughs> and with COVID, the panics that happened over yeah. simple things like toilet paper, you know, it was, yeah. it was really kind of concerning. <laughs> and so, you know, kind of what's happening now with this back to, you know, back to, to nature movement or back to the land movement is kind of how I was raised. And it was like, geez, this is, you know, it's really appealing to me. It always has been, but with COVID and the things that are happening, in our world politically and just society in general, it just feels like it's time to get our family uh, more grounded and more connected. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really, um, we just are looking so forward to being back closer to nature and, and like Brooke said, you know, kind of learning the value of, of wor hard work and the fruits of your labor. It, mm -hmm. It's something that you cannot ever really explain or convince your children that that they will value that until they do it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I think Brooke's seen the same thing as we've built things here and, and you know, created, started shaping this land. So, yeah, it's pretty. Um, hey, buddy, you're wet. <laughs> our big, big you're all wet, dude. This is Capone. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's Capella, the little one. <laughs> you know, Chuck has so much more knowledge about how to live off the land. And, and, you know, he learned from his mom how to garden and all that kind of stuff. And whereas I grew up where we went to the grocery store every day to pick out our food for dinner, <laughs> you know, and, it, and, our, and our potatoes came in a box. And so it was very, very different. You know, uh, when I learned how to pump gas, I went to the full service gas station instead of uh, doing it myself. So, you know, it's, this is a, a, a huge step for me in um, learning how to do everything. So, um, you know, we thought when, when we would start videotaping, and we've done a few videos of the progress of um, from first seeing the land up until, um, you know, the next video I'm putting out is, is you know, um, the harvesting of the trees, and we'll go a little bit more into that. You know, I always, I always would tease Brooke about when we would go to the farm. We'd go to our Wisconsin farm every summer to see my parents, and um, we would work on the farm, you know, mowing trails, pulling brush, trimming branches, cutting firewood, and doing, you know, kind of some, some farm work for a limited time, but really got to see her working in that environment and I always teased her that she would be a great farm woman yeah. because farm wife because <laughs> she was uh you know she was comfortable in her bibs and this isn't um like green acres where um the uh the farm wife was out of the New York City penthouse yeah and into no, the, so I have a bit of a taste of yeah it. she has a taste of it she likes it it's not um yeah. something where it's you know everything is completely new and she's very open to learning. And We are also moving two of our three children. Um, Chuck has a son from a previous marriage, Christian, who is my bonus child. And he is 25, almost 26, actually. This month he'll be 26. Yep. And he, um, if you've watched any of our previous videos, he is a huge help um, for us with this farm. 
and um, <laughs> and he's pretty excited about having this land to come to do hunting and to be outdoors and and it's just been a really great way to connect with him um, and then we have a 16 year old son Gabe who is he would have moved up here the moment we bought the land if yep. he could have <laughs> he is definitely an outdoorsy guy he likes to mountain bike and hunt and he just loves being outdoors so he is super excited about getting up here to live and um, he wants to raise chickens and hogs and kind of try a little bit of the farming lifestyle chuck has kind of urged him to try it out so we're looking forward to seeing what that's like well he's kind of business minded and he's so very business minded um mm -hmm. very good at, at saving money um i think he's got the potential to be a you know really good businessman and so he's looking at how can he make money here and so we started talking about looking at the john Siskovich, Sus i think it is um chicken tractors how mm -hmm. to how to design those, John? I'm sorry if if you see if you see this. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong, but um, <laughs> um, our youngest is Bree, and she is, just turned 13 years old, and she is a bit more resistant about moving up here. Um, and it's uh, I think it's just her age and the the uncertainty of what life is going to be like up here because what she knows so far is us really roughing it when we come up here on the weekends we're camping we now you know we built um the shed grumpy's garage that we're able to sleep in especially when it's cold that's a huge relief but um but she's not super thrilled about it so um but she's she's really into horses and so we're we're trying to entice her with the the idea that she will be in charge of the horses once we get them and um and i think she's pretty excited about that so I think once she gets up here and starts really realizing that this is not such a bad life, that um, being outdoors and, and being with family and starting a new school and being with animals is going to be a pretty, pretty eye-opening, awesome experience for her. You know, at least that's what yeah, we're hoping I, for. And it, it kind of gets back to, you know, kids, our kids are very privileged. They grew up, you know, with, without any, lacking anything and, you know, having to learn to work and earn things um you know real work um is is a new thing for for brie in particular um i've been a little tougher on the boys i think without a doubt yeah. growing up um, breeze breeze had it much easier so this is a bigger shock for her and plus being 13 and moving is you know that that's a big disruption in, in her life mm -hmm. where gabe He's more of a world traveler. He wants to travel, loves the, you know, the life on the move, kind of what he envisions himself being a traveler one day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and so, and my oldest son, Christian, he's really into just this, this legacy property. He absolutely loves it. You know, we, when my father passed away in, in COVID and um, <clears throat> so we were in isolation and Christian and I, uh, because we were with him and we got exposed, my sister, um, also contracted it and so we had to come here and isolate um, really for all, like two weeks mm -hmm. and so we brought lumber from our farm in Wisconsin drove it down to Virginia and um, began building a shed mm -hmm. and so we, we have a whole a whole story on that but it was really therapeutic um, my dad was 86 um, and you know Christian and dad were extremely close um, dad taught him a lot and watching the, the lessons that my dad taught Christian um, w really came out as we were building the shed and, and all the things we've been doing mm -hmm. here on the ranch since then just kind of really reinforced the notion that, you know, legacy, farm living, um, kind of having to do things with your hands is so important to just that connection with your family even, you know, cause every time we work on something now, we think about dad, we think about what dad taught me, what he taught Christian. Those lessons are things that I want to be able to pass on to my children. And, and I know Brooke, as she learned, she's going to want to do the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. and YouTube has been a great help. I follow a lot of people on YouTube and yeah. I've kind of reconnected with a lot of things and geez, uh, sometimes realize I've forgotten yeah. a lot. Well, and what it makes me excited about the whole YouTube community with homesteading is, yeah. is there's there's so many ways to learn things, you know, and 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 all of you who put videos out, it's just awesome to watch because I think, okay, 
if I, I don't understand how to do something, I can look and see what you all have done. Yeah. And and that's such an awesome community to yeah. be able to, to have that resource. And, you know, we can't wait to get plugged in even more. Cause... So we have um, 285 acres and we bought it from a, a wonderful man, uh, Mr. Phillips. It had been in, in the Phillips and Quisenberry family for a long time when we connected he just he became kind of he instantly became a friend he's a wonderful man you know the people up here have just bent over backwards to help us yeah, very um, good people up here we love it the blessings that we've been given to to have the fortune to even be here to have property like this to be able to to afford this um we know it's not an accident yeah. and you know that that we found this property that for us was perfect yeah. literally perfect for us in in every way imaginable um, that there has to be more to the story than just Chuck and Brooke. And, you know, what we hope is that you guys, you all enjoy, you know, what we're doing and, and learn from it and just enjoy the beauty. Um, you know, this is a movie set behind us. It yeah. really is when you, when we came in, but it, it turned out that this is better than we ever imagined. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's the beauty is spectacular yeah. here. And unfortunately, video does not do it justice it so we want to do um you know do justice to the to the land and we're we want to be very sensitive to the land make sure that we don't you know put too much of a human print on it mm -hmm. because it is such beautiful natural environment yeah we're excited and we hope you guys are excited to join us on the journey and see where uh this land takes us in our life and and we can't wait to to explore it and share it with you guys we can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life on one